Hi guys. It is a very pleasant morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of Ithaca, New York on this lovely late summer day. It is Thursday, September 10th, 2020, somewhere around there. And, uh, Oh yes, my name is Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles. This is my little trail pal, Sancho Panza. And we've got a busy day dealing with, I don't know, septic pipes and dried up $5,000 ponds and plenty, plenty to get out there and keep me occupied while the planet collapses around me and burns to the ground. But before I head out, let's just, we're going to look at three <coughs> reports of doom and gloom to get my day going uh, to see how doomed we are today. Not hard to find doom and gloom. This is the number one story on the planet, according to Yahoo News from the good old New York Times. Federal report warns of financial havoc from climate change. Yes, a report commissioned by federal regulators overseeing the nation's commodities market has concluded that climate change threatens U.S. financial markets as the cost of wildfires, storms, droughts, and floods spreads through insurance and mortgage markets, pension funds, and other financial institutions. Uh, quoting the report, a world racked by frequent and devastating shocks from climate change cannot sustain the fundamental conditions supporting our financial systems. Yes. Um, this is the first wide-ranging federal government study focused on the specific impacts of climate change on Wall Street. Uh, perhaps most notable is that it is being published at all the Trump administration has suppressed, altered, or watered down government science around climate change as it pushes an aggressive agenda of environmental deregulation that it hopes will spur economic growth. But the new report asserts that doing nothing to avert climate change will, in fact, do the opposite. That is exactly what it's going to do, but uh, obviously that is all about the humans. All about the humans. So let's look at where our fellow earthlings are here in late summer of 2020. Um, this is, you know, this <clears throat> World Wildlife Fund report that comes out every two years. Uh, animal populations have declined nearly 70% in the last 50 years. Okay, it is impossible to deny. This is CBS News, the mainstream media of the mainstream media. It is impossible to deny humans are changing and destroying the natural environment at an unprecedented and alarming rate. According to a new report, animal populations have declined by such a staggering amount that only an overhaul of the world's economic systems could possibly, possibly reverse the damage. Uh, well, there's two things. Number one, an overhaul of the world's economic system 
could not reverse the damage and even uh, if it could, even if an overhaul of the world's economic system could reverse the damage, it ain't gonna happen. Nearly 21,000 monitored populations of mammals, fish, birds, reptiles, and amphibians encompassing almost 4,400 species around the world declined an average of 68 percent between 1970 and 2016. Latin America uh, faring the worst of all, declining an average of 94 percent. Yes, uh, you know, every two years the World Wildlife Fund puts this out. The latest report indicates that the rate populations, meaning of our fellow earthlings, are declining, quote, signal a fundamentally broken relationship between humans and the natural world, the consequences of which can be catastrophic. This is World Wildlife Fund uh, President and CEO Carter Roberts. Quote, This report reminds us that we destroy the planet at our peril because it is our home. As humanity's footprint expands into once wild places, we are devastating species populations. Huh. We cannot shield humanity from the impacts of environmental destruction. It is time to restore our broken relationship with nature for the benefit of species and people alike. And then if you are not aware of this, let CBS News explain it to you. Humans are to blame. The report blames humans alone. Humans alone for the quote dire state of our planet. Thank you. There is one reason for the dire state of planet Earth in 2020, and that is humans. Humans. We are the problem. The solution to the problem, if the problem is humans, figure out the solution. The report points to the exponential growth of human consumption, human population, global trade, and urbanization over the last 50 years as reasons for the unprecedented decline of Earth's resources, which it says the planet is incapable now of replenishing the overuse of these finite resources by at least 56% this year has had a devastating effect on biodiversity, which is crucial to sustaining human land, human life on Earth. The report points to land use change in particular, the destruction of habitats like rainforests for farming as the key driver for loss of biodiversity. And then it breaks all of this down looking at um, mainly at agriculture and the food industry the food industry and habitat destruction and then of course uh, we look at the back horse in the pack which is climate change so up to now 
species over exploitation, invasive species and diseases, and pollution are all considered threats to biodiversity, the report said. However, human caused climate change is projected to become as or more important than other drivers of biodiversity loss in the coming decades. <clears throat> climate change creates an ongoing destructive feedback loop in which the worsening climate leads to the decline in genetic variability, species richness, and populations, and the, that loss of bi biodiversity adversely affects the climate, which adversely affects biodiversity. Can you see the loop-de-loop and 100% of everything talked about in this uh, report and in this article in CBS News has one cause and that is humans. Humans are the driver of the sixth mass extinction. There is one way to save the planet at this point, and that is to get humans off the planet. And uh, you can figure out your own choices of how to do that, I guess. But So that brings us up to where we are as of today, actually. That brings us up to, to 2016. That brings us up to where we were four years ago. All right, and uh, before the election of Donald Trump and Jair Bozo Nero. Okay, but let's go from CBS over to Associated Press, the single biggest mainstream news gathering organization on the planet, looking ahead from 2020. Do you think 2020s? Disasters are wild. Experts see worse in the future. And here is a picture of... Uh, this is a picture of Oregon uh, here this week. The new normal. All right. This is by this fellow Seth Borenstein. I like this guy. Okay, explain this to us, Seth. Why 2020 will soon be seen as the halcyon good old days. If I can find my white cursor on this white background. All right. A record amount of California is now burning, spurred by a nearly 20-year mega drought. To the north, parts of Oregon that don't usually catch fire are now in flames. Meanwhile, the Atlantic 16th and 17th named tropical storms are swirling, a record number for this time of year. Powerful Typhoon Haishin last Japan and the Korean Peninsula this week. Last month, it hit 130 degrees in Death Valley the hottest earth has been in nearly a century. Phoenix keeps setting triple-digit heat records, while Colorado went through a weather whiplash of 90-degree heat to snow this week. Siberia, famous for its cli icy climate, hit 100 degrees earlier this year, accompanied by its own wildfires. Before that, Australia and the Amazon rainforest were in flames. Amid all that, Iowa's derecho, bizarre straight line winds that got as powerful as a major hurricane causing billions of dollars in damages, barely went noticed. Freak natural, dis natural disasters, most 
with what scientists say likely have a climate change connection seem to be everywhere in the crazy year 2020. But experts say we will probably look back and say those, meaning these, were the good old days when disasters weren't so wild. Okay. So let's take a little survey of doomsday prophets. Let's start with Georgia Tech climate scientist Kim Cobb. Quote, it's going to get a lot worse. I say that with emphasis because it does challenge the imagination and that's the scary thing to know as a climate scientist in 2020, close quote. Colorado University Environmental Sciences Chief Walid Abdullahi, NASA's former chief scientist, said the trajectory of worsening disasters and climate change from the burning of coal, oil, and gas is clear and is basic physics. Quote, I strongly believe we're going to look back in 20 years, certainly 20 and definitely 50 years, and say, wow, 2020 was a crazy year, but I miss it. Close quote. That's because what is happening now is just the type of crazy climate scientists anticipated 10 or 20 years ago. This is North Carolina State climatologist Kathy Dello. Quote, it seems like this is what we always were talking about a decade ago, close quote. Even so, Cobb said the sheer magnitude of what is happening now was hard to fathom back then, meaning 10 years ago, just as the future of climate disasters is hard to fathom now. Quote, quoting this Cobb fellow, uh, I'm sorry, this Cobb lady, Kim Cobb, quote, a year like 2020 could have been the subject of a marvelous science fiction film in 2000. Now we have to watch and digest real-time disaster after disaster after disaster on top of a pandemic. The outlook could not be any more grim. It's just a horrifying prospect. The 2030s are going to be noticeably worse than the 2020s, close quote, she said. University of Michigan Environment Dean Jonathan Overpeck, also a climate scientist, said that in 30 years, the cause of the climate change already baked into the atmosphere. This is, you know, already set in motion that if we, all of the emissions reductions are going to do nothing to reverse because the destruction of planet Earth is baked into the cake is what that means, quote, we are pretty much guaranteed that we will have double, meaning double the number of disasters that we have now, close quote. Expect stronger winds, more drought, more heavy downpours, and more floods, Abdelati said. Quote, the kind of things we are seeing are no surprise to the scientific community that understands the rules and the laws of physics, added Dello, quote, a lot of people want to blame it on 2020, 
that 2020 did not do this, we know the behavior that caused climate change, close quote. Consider the world's environment like an engine. This is World Meteorological Organization Secretary General Petri Tallis, quote, we have injected more energy into the system because we have trapped more heat into the atmosphere, close quote. That means more energy for tropical storms as well as changes to rainfall patterns that bring drought to some places and heavy rainfall to others. In California, where more than 2.3, um, now, th this was yesterday, so now in California, where more than two and a half million acres have burned so far, the f you know, this year alone, the fires are spurred by climate change, drying plants and trees that then go up in flames said University of Colorado fire scientist Jennifer Belch, California is in the middle of a nearly 20-year mega drought, the first of its kind since in the U.S. since Europeans arrived, Overpeck said. Scientists also make direct connections between heat waves and climate change. Some disasters <clears throat> at the moment cannot be directly linked to man-made war man warming, such as Iowa's Dorecho overpeck said, but looking at the big picture over time shows the problem, and it's one that comes down to the basic physics of trapped heat energy, quoting Abdelati. I am not an alarmist. I don't want to scare people. It is a problem with tremendous consequences, and it's too important not to get right." Close quote. And now, in a desperate, futile, uh, dying attempt to find some hopium in all of this, uh, AP had to dig deep. Uh, and so, even though the climate will likely get worse, Overpeck is also optimistic about what future generations, yes, what future generations Overpeck is also optimistic about what future generations will think when they look back at the wild and dangerous weather of 2020. Quote, I think we will look back and we will see a whole bunch of increasingly crazy years and that this year in 2020 I hope we look back and say it got crazy enough that it motivated us to act on climate change in the United States. <laughs> oh, good Lord. The apocaloptimism out there. But anyway, I have to, to uh, wrap up today's little daily dose of doom and gloom. Uh, if you enjoyed uh, today, today's dose of how doomed we are, please thumb up this video. And if you want more doom and gloom where this came from, you can uh, subscribe to Collapse Chronicles. And I really do appreciate anyone who has ever supported whatever it is that I do to ruin your day here. Uh, whenever I can on Collapse Chronicles. And uh, with that, I'm going to wrap up uh, today's rant. And what's it going to be? 
I think I'm going to go out there and bury a septic pipe. What do you think, little dog? Burying a septic pipe? Does that sound like a fine way to save the planet? Bye, guys.